Okay, so this is where we jump from a sequence into a series. Now, a series um, is just basically, it's, it's a summation. Um, what it means is that you are adding a bunch of numbers together. So instead of just listing out a pattern, you start adding them. So an example that, that I've seen on an ACT is uh, find the sum of the numbers between 50 and 150 inclusive. So that does mean including uh, these these two numbers here on the end, okay? Um, a partial sum is also referred to as a finite sum, okay? Um, and is adding the terms of the sequence together. Adding the terms of the sequence together. Okay. Uh, we have notation just like a sub n goes with a sequence, okay? So I'm going to put a sub n for the sequence, right? Just as a refresher. S sub n is to denote the sum of the first n terms. And you can write a series in different ways. You can use expanded notation or sigma notation. We're first going to talk about uh, expanded notation. So the expanded notation um, for the problem above would basically look like, um, oops, excuse me, um, blah, 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 would look like, so if you rest it, okay, so, um, it would look like where you actually did this by hand, like 50 plus 51 plus 52 plus la, 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 all the way to 150. So that is expanded notation, which is insane. Uh, but if you were asked to find S sub 10, this is the notation you need to be on the lookout for. That would just mean, that would just mean to find like the first 10 terms. And you would actually just punch them all in, you know, just, Add them all up and get a nice pretty number there that I'm not going to waste my time doing in this video. But you have a calculator, so you could do it. But that's what S sub 10 would be. So like, you know, S sub, S sub 1 would just mean the sum of the first term. Um, S sub 2 would mean sum of the first two terms. Okay, so hopefully you get the idea. You have to actually add stuff together to get your S sub n's. Okay, so on this problem, back to this problem, um, we, they want the sum of the first 101 terms. And the reason it's 101 terms is because you have to include the 50 and the 150. So if you're ever trying to count like how many numbers there are between, a common mistake is a lot of people just subtract these. And they're like, oh, if I'm counting from 50 to 150 and all the numbers in between, I just need to subtract them and I get 100. But you need to remember to add the first number back on that hasn't been counted yet. Some of you already have done studies in counting numbers and how to how to do this, but many of you have not. So basically, take the difference and then add one back, and then you'll be on the right track. So um, if we're going to do this problem, uh, we don't want to have to add it all together by hand. So we're going to talk about how like there is a formula to do it. Okay, but before we use this formula, let's talk about sigma notation. So this is the preferred way to set up a series or a summation. It's called sigma notation. That is a Greek letter here, sigma. And um, we are, there's, there's a couple things you could do. If you had, um, if you were on the ACT, your calculator has a button that will literally do this for you. You just have to learn what everything is uh, so that you could type it in yourself. We're going to also learn how to do this by, by hand, of course, um, or not by hand, but with a formula. So what am I looking at? Okay, so basically, notice that the N is miraculously gone, and now it's an I. This could literally be any alpha in the world. Like, I see I a lot. I see K. Sometimes I will see an N. Uh, but don't freak out because the letter change is just a variable. Whatever's down here is going to be the nth term that they want you to start adding together. So like in this one, it's basically saying start with the first term, and then the number at the top is going to be the last term. I'll call it the last nth term. It's, it's the, also the nth term, but it's where they want you to stop. Uh, with with adding numbers together. So right here, this is telling me to add the first hundred numbers together. How did I know it was the first hundred numbers together? Well, I'm going from 1 to 101, and that is a total of 
a hundred and num a hundred numbers that I'm adding together. Okay, so now uh, this right here, you might be wondering where the crap did this come from. So what this is, guys, this is the a sub n. So all that I did was I looked above at that pattern, um, and I started listing them out. Right, fifty, fifty one, fifty two, dot dot dot, all the way to one fifty. So this is an arithmetic sequence. The common difference is one. The first term is 50, and so I put it into our formula, a1 plus the common difference times n minus 1. But instead of n minus 1, it's just an i minus 1. So I know that's all crazy, but to, to simplify things, think of it this way. This is where you want to start. This is what term you want to start with. This is what term you want to stop with. And this back here is the formula for your sequence. And once you have all that together, like I said, you can literally type this into the calculator just like this, and it will give you the answer, or I'm going to give you a formula for this. Actually, I'm going to give you two formulas for this. Because why? Because if it's arithmetic or it's, if it's geometric, things will be different. So let me give you the formulas here, and then we'll look back at that sigma and, and see if we can figure out how to do it, okay? So with the arithmetic series, what you're supposed to do is take how many terms you're adding together and divide that by two, and then you multiply that by the first term plus the last term. So you just add the first and the last, and then multiply that by n over two. Not too shabby. Geometric series, uh, you it's a bit different. You're supposed to take the first term and multiply it by 1 minus the rate to the nth power divided by 1 minus the rate. Don't simplify this. Like type it in just as is or fill it in just as is and go from there. So above, what the heck was happening above? Was it arithmetic or was it geometric? Well, we were adding, I'm not going to scroll up because that'll make us all nauseous. Okay, we were adding all of these numbers together, right? All the way up to 150. So this was arithmetic because we were adding the same thing each time. So how many terms were we adding together? Well, from 50 to 150 is 100 numbers, right? So, or is it I? Okay, so what we're going to do is fill that in right here, and I'm also going to be filling in my first term and my last term. This is the easy part. First term, last term, and then we're going to fill this in right here. And honestly, guys, I think now that I'm looking at it, I said 100, and I think once or maybe even twice, but remember that counting method I told you about. N is actually 101, because remember, we're doing the difference between these two, but then we need to add one back. So kind of tricky, but that is how many terms we're adding together. And when you type that all in, you'll get something. Um, I think you'll get something like this, if I typed it in correctly. Um, and, you know, and if you want to go back and try the sigma thing instead of doing it by hand, you should get the same answer if you type in this, uh, what was originally here before, um, I would use an X. It's the calculator's going to make you actually type it in a letter. So I would use X instead of I. That'll be a little bit easier. And if you don't know where to find it, well, I've, I've written it right here. So you can go and find it. Y'all are smart kids. You can go find it. Okay. Uh, but we're going to be using this most of the time um, because I need you to know these, these formulas. Um, and for geometric, this would be the formula. Now, we haven't done an example of that yet. Um, let me make one up real quick for the sake of notes. So when would I use this? Okay, so let's say that I was doing, let's say I was doing the following. Uh, maybe it was like 12, um, let's divide by 3, plus 4, let's divide by 3 again. Let's divide by 3 again, um, dot, 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 and then, like, maybe we're going to stop over here at 4 over 297. Okay, so if this was given to us and somebody said, hey, you know, I need you to add all these fellas together, uh, the first thing that you would do, or the first thing that I would do is think, uh, what's the pattern, you know? And if you notice that you are... Uh, multiplying by one-third each and every time, that would be a good start because that would tell you that this is geometric, okay? And so if it's geometric, 
I'm going to use this formula right here that I just wrote. So the first term is a 12. Uh, I've got 1 minus my rate, right, which is 1 third over 1 minus 1 third. And that's uh, the only thing I'm missing is this n. If I knew my n, guys, I could type it in and be done like immediately. So how do I know what term that is way over there? Well, you need to think about it as a sequence, you know. Think about those plus signs not being there. And if they were commas instead, it would just be a list of numbers. And you could go back to this formula and figure out what in the world term that is. So just like I did uh, in the last video, um, this would be our a sub n, 4 over 297. It's going to equal the first term times the r, which is a third, to the n minus 1 power. And so I'm going to stop talking and start typing. Uh, remember the whole deal, you're going to divide off the 12, uh, and then we're going to move into logarithms. And then after that, we'll figure out our n, and I'll come plug it back in over here. Um, I don't even know if I need to do that for you. Uh, I'm going to hit pause and do it and show the work right here. So hit, hit pause yourself if you want to try it before I reveal the answer. All right, so if you have done the math, then you're staring at something like this, and you might be thinking, this is weird. How do you have a 7.18 term? Uh, why is that a decimal? Or maybe you didn't think at all and you just got the answer and got excited and plugged it in. This should be a whole number. It should be. Now, does that mean that I did my math wrong? Um, I don't think I did. What I think I did wrong is when I got this number uh, or stole this problem from somewhere, uh, this number is wrong and doesn't fit the pattern. What a great learning opportunity we just had. So in an ideal world, whatever I had copied down would have been the correct number here. I honestly don't know what that was supposed to be. Well, it's whatever the seventh term would have been. So if I kept dividing by 3 out to 7. Uh, so this is a little bit off, which made this a little bit off. So I do apologize for that. But uh, assuming this had been right from the start. In fact, I'm going to find that number in a second. Um, this would be a whole number 7, and then we would plug it in right here, and then you could type all of that in. In fact, let me just do this real quick. I'm going to do 4 ninths times 4 ninths, okay, uh, times one third to the what power? Let's see how many times. This is already at four, so five, six, seven to the third power. Uh, that should have been a four over a 243. Holy free holies. I don't know what number I was looking at when I got this problem, but it was not the right thing. So if that had been a 243, friends, two, four, <laughs> then this would have been a 243. And then we would have divided things out, and this would have been a pretty whole number 7 that we could have plugged in right there, and then gotten a beautiful sum. And what does that sum represent? Well, it just represents that that's the answer if I were to add the first seven terms of this series together. So hopefully you're not thoroughly confused. Uh, work together to try to figure out how this stuff works. And uh, good luck to you.